The Milwaukee Bucks making a big move today as they have fired head coach Adrian Griffin uh, not even 50 games into his NBA coaching career. This was Griffin's first time as an NBA head coach, um, and now he's not anymore as the Bucks have decided to go a different way. And it... I, I think this presents more questions than answers. If this was just about getting Doc Rivers in there, then you should have done that in the first place. Um, if you weren't going to let a Adrian Griffin figure out the season with an entirely new group in Milwaukee, right? Like Dame Lillard figuring things out in Milwaukee, Giannis figuring out how to play with him. How is the defense going to work? Is the defense going to work? How, how is all of this going to play out? To have all of those questions surrounding this team and then not let the coach have a full season to try to figure it out, what's the point in doing it in the first place? So there's a lot of talk today about how um, there must be something else to this. And that's the only thing I can think of because this is panicky shit for an organization to just let go of a coach who has his team second place in the East. Do they look as good as Boston right now? No. Do they look um, as dominant as maybe some people thought they might? No. But, A, I think they're getting there. B, there was always going to be a stretch here where they had to figure all of that out. And you wanted to see what could this offense be, aside from just Damon Giannis pick and roll a thousand times, because that would be unstoppable. And defensively, you wanted to see, could this team guard at all? Because Dame Lillard can't, really. And Giannis, as a perimeter defender, isn't the, the lockdown guy that a lot of people imagine he could be. But him and Brooke Lopez down at the block, very good rim protection down low. But it, like, it, it has been up and down, but it's been significantly more up than down in Milwaukee. And so, like, Doc Rivers is 100% a better coach than Adrian Griffin. I, I will not argue that for a second. But if you weren't going to let Adrian Griffin have at least a season to make sure he knows how to fit all these pieces together, then what was the point of hiring him in the first place? I just, I do not get this move for Milwaukee. And maybe Doc Rivers comes in and, and he is the answer. Um, he, he has not been a perfect coach, but he is a fine, fine head coach at the National Basketball Association. So I... I, I want to say that this is um that, that there must be something more to this, but it, it just it looks very panicky for the Milwaukee Bucks last night. And one of the reasons they may be panicking is the Philadelphia 76ers are common. Um Joel Embiid last night, 70 points against the San Antonio Spurs. Just an absolutely beast of a performance from Joel Embiid. 21 points coming from the free throw line. Um, he was just, he was a monster all game. And it is wild now that Joel Embiid is probably having a better season this year than he was during his MVP year, uh, a season ago. Like, this is a three-year stretch of just absolute pure dominance from uh, a gigantic man who has been the, the face of this franchise for a while now. And we're seeing a run of him healthy, and we're seeing what he really can be and what the 76ers organization can be. And that puts the pressure on the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid has played as many games in the Eastern Conference Final as I have. That is absolutely absurd. The pressure has to be on with how well he is playing. It can't just be, well, we had a tough uh, opponent in the second round and didn't get there. They had a 3-2 lead on the Celtics and a chance to put that game away, and they didn't. Um... And then Game 7 was just atrocious for them all game. But for for Philadelphia now, that the pressure has to be on. They got rid of James Harden, so that the headache is out of the room now. They got some real flippable pieces back in that move. Now is the time to go out and get another guy to go along with Joel Embiid. Because th th this is a performance that cannot be wasted again by the Philadelphia 76ers. And maybe that guy's Kyle Lowry. Um, as he gets traded from the Miami Heat to the Charlotte Hornets. In a deal that also includes a 2027 first round pick. Um, I, I don't... I, I would imagine Lowry is renting, not buying in Charlotte. I'll put it that way. I, I don't think Lowry is very long for the Hornets. Now, they're going to try to trade him because with the new uh, salary cap restrictions in the NBA, he is very limited in terms of teams that he can sign with if he does get bought out. So they're going to try to flip him to a team. And I think Philadelphia makes a lot of sense. Um, he doesn't, like, it's not, okay, there, now you're a championship team. But... It's what we talked about in the hockey discussion yesterday. Raises that floor a little bit for the Philadelphia 76ers. Provides a, a bit of that championship pedigree that um, that, that may, they may need. And I, I think would be a real interesting piece reunited with Nick Nurse. For uh, for Charlotte, they're just tearing down um, 
it, it hasn't worked in Charlotte uh, around ball. We'll, we'll see what does end up happening there, but it's it, it's starting over in Charlotte for sure. For the Miami Heat, um, th- this is a fantastic fit. Like Terry Rozier, the second you see that he's going to be on the Miami Heat, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's a Heat player. And so again, this, th- this certainly makes them better. I, I still don't think it makes them better than Philly or Milwaukee or Boston. Now, we have seen before, they don't necessarily need to have more talent than any of those teams to beat them in a playoff series. They, they can they can do that on their own just fine. But they need to... Um, I, I, I don't want to say they need to get more, but if they want to really be on par with those guys, this can't be the last move. They've taken a couple of big swings lately and come up on the short end of a, a Damian Lillard trade or something along those lines. Um, this, this, I think if they're going to be a championship team, I think this needs to be, it's a big piece of it, but I don't know if it can be the only piece because it still feels like they're hanging around in the, the Cleveland Knicks Pacers area, just below the tier of Boston, Milwaukee and Philadelphia. But the, the East is going to be so much fun this year in the NBA. Uh, the West is too. Like the NBA is just at a, a fantastic time in terms of talent. And if they are bringing in a Vegas and a Seattle, then th- those teams are coming in at the absolute right time because there's so much talent in this league right now. 